You're listening to Saturday Morning Media. And now, back to our show. Here we go. Welcome to the Grant Cast. My name is Grant Pachoco, and I am so honored that you downloaded, that you listened, that you are checking this out. I hope you had a happy holidays. I hope you had a happy new year. Um, it was sort of a quiet new year around here. Uh, Toily did a live stream um, kind of early in the evening and then uh, just watch old wrestling. Uh, actually, uh, this is another thing I can talk about. Watched old wrestling and Reservation Dogs, uh, which I would, uh, which I will talk about in just a second. I'm adding it to my list of things to talk about. But there were a couple things um, that I didn't mention, just because the limited way that I did the last episode, which was a year in review, um, where I only picked one picture from each each month. There was a couple things that I wanted to mention this month that are kind of like. Honorable mentions, I guess you would say, to uh, to the year in review, and the first one, huge. I guess I guess this this, ha- this started happening before 2022, but 2022 is when I made my decision. I changed my hairstyle, and I have to say, I've been having a pretty good hair year. Now, uh, my wife always says, uh, you should love your hair because many men your age do not have hair like yours. And, uh, so I say, thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, I just had sort of a a spiky haircut for such a long time. And then the pandemic hit and, uh, I kind of got into this habit even before the pandemic where days where I I wasn't going outside, I wasn't going anywhere. I was not going to put any product in my hair well then the pandemic hit and I didn't go anywhere for a long time and I actually didn't get my hair cut for a long time um I was gonna go get my hair cut I got my hair cut in January of 2020 and then I was gonna get my hair cut again in March when everything locked down uh, so I did not get a haircut at the beginning of the pandemic and I was stuck inside and it grew forever. And I don't know, it does not matter when I got my next haircut. But anyway, I got in this habit of just uh, not putting anything in it. And as it grew longer, uh, I would just sort of comb it over to one side. Um, and then when I got my haircut again, I did get it short and spiky again. But I, But then I would spend more time not going anywhere and I was I would put it uh, just to the side and then I just kind of decided you know what I'm gonna get my hair cut short on the sides but then not like spiky on top I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer so I can kind of comb it to the side anyway I love this new haircut and I had it done by a couple different people I would go to Floyd's barbershop it's sort of a chain um, that you you may have heard of you may have not it's kind of like the hip retro um, barbershop, not, you know, like retro, like, uh, hipster, uh, barbershop. And, um, I had it cut by a few people. And then I had a hairstylist named McKinley, uh, cut my hair. And actually the, uh, the episode I did a few episodes back about, uh, I think it, it wasn't the 200th episode, but the episode about the woman calling from the barbershop that was inspired by an incident that happened, uh, when I was with McKinley and McKinley would never, uh, behave the way that that person on the phone behaved. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it. Anyway, she cut my hair. I loved it. I said, what is your name? Cause I'm going to request you every single time. She said her name was McKinley. She gave me a card. And then just every single time I've been back in there, I've asked for, her. and then, and then, Uh, she sent me an email and I was a little bit like, wait, how did you get my email? But it must be because, uh, through Floyd's for making the appointment on the app and stuff. And she said, she's moving to another salon, kind of like a fancy salon. And, uh, it was right around the corner from the old place. So that's fine. But I was real nervous because I was like, wait, this is like, this is like fancy salon place. Like this is, you know, $140 haircuts (laughs) type salon. And uh, made an appointment, went in there, and it was only $40, and uh, I tipped her very, very well. And so, McKinley, thank you for having a great hair year, and I really appreciate it. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that kind of happened in the pandemic, too, is YouTube Premium. I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch 
just t- I watch more YouTube than regular television. Um, I just watch a, a, just a ton of YouTube. I just really, really do. So uh, since I watch so much YouTube and I create for YouTube, I sprung for YouTube Premium. And let me tell you, it's amazing watching YouTube without any of the commercials. And if I get into some sort of weird situation where I'm not on my account or I've I've logged out on my computer or whatever and I go to YouTube and a video starts with a commercial, I'm like, oh, thank God I have YouTube premium. But so anyway, I'm just telling you that story. Uh, if you watch a lot of YouTube, it's worth it. And people kind of malign it. People go, I'm not paying for YouTube premium. And you know what? pay for it. It's great. But, uh, and I got the family plan. So I have it for all my accounts. My wife has it and I have one account left and I'm going to share it with, um, my father. So, cause my father watches a lot of YouTube and he just watches a lot of commercials. So anyway, the reason I brought that up is cause I also watch a lot of music, um, on there and, um, There is a song, and I'll put the link to this in the show notes. There's a band called Paramore. You may have heard of them. You may have not. And they released an album, I think, in 2018 called After Laughter. And I kind of heard one of the songs. I don't know where I heard this song originally, but I downloaded the album, and I loved the album. I loved the album, except for, like, I think the very last song. I could listen to every song on that album. I think it's all fantastic. I think it's all amazing. Um, they, they, That whole album is just perfection. And what I liked about that album is you can kind of tell, at least to my ear, and this could be completely wrong, uh, but I don't think it is, um, that it's sort of like they, they kind of captured like an 80s new wave type vibe while they're doing it, um, or just like an 80s kind of feel to the whole album. And um, one of the songs I have always thought sounds like Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac. Like it just has these little, the way the background vocals come in, I'm like, oh, this this kind of like is inspired by Everywhere. And then um, there was a video that popped up on YouTube of Paramore singing Everywhere. And at the beginning of the video, uh, the lead singer says, uh, this is a song we listened to a lot when we were recording this album. And uh, and then they do just an amazing kick-ass cover of Everywhere. And that video, uh, one of the things with YouTube Premium is you can download videos so that if you're offline, uh, you can watch these videos offline. And that is one that I've downloaded and I watch that live performance over and over again. I'll put it in the show notes for this. But the reason I'm telling you all that is... Um, because I listen to music, I get some like these like kind of fun music suggestions that will pop up uh, in the, you know, in my algorithm. And uh, there was this thumbnail of uh, kind of this girl playing guitar and just staring straight at the camera. And it said, expert in a dying field, the Beths and uh, like official music video or whatever. I'll put this in the show notes, too. And so I clicked on it and I watched it and I was like, this song is amazing. I love this song. When did this come out? Oh, it came out in like August of 2022. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to check out this album. I immediately downloaded that song, but then I downloaded the album and every song except for one was just amazing. Like I was just like, this band is so good. It is uh, a guitar, a lead guitar um, uh, a rhythm guitar, drums, and a bass. That's all it is. It's so simple. It's so perfect. It reminds me of, and I could be wrong about this. It kind of reminds me of like just nineties, not grunge, but just sort of rock. I guess they'd be considered an indie band, uh, these days. Um, but the singer, she's got, um, Elizabeth, I think is her name, um, has a really unique voice. Um, just really, really great songs. And like every time I would hear a new song, I was like, this is my new favorite song. I love this song. This is my new favorite song. I love this song. So I'll put a link to uh, Expert in a Dying Field in the show notes for this as well. But it's just, I just, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. They're so good. And then because I started watching those videos, other Beth's videos popped up and they have three albums and a live album. So three albums, including this most recent one. And I started listening to tracks from the old album, the like the second album, uh, the one before this one. I was like, I love all these songs. And then I was like, should I listen to the first album? And uh, I think for the first album, I love most of the songs, not every single song, but man, they're so good. And, and it hasn't been since After Laughter by Paramore where I've just like 
fell in love with an album and just like every song on this album is my favorite song. So uh, Beth's expert in a dying field. Uh, I was bummed to find out that they were just here in Southern California in August. So I missed them, but I was excited to find out that they're coming back in March. And I was like, oh, great. And so I started looking up information and um, it's a Friday night. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's fine. Whatever. Um, The show doesn't start till nine. Okay, all right. Uh, it's in uh, like the heart of Hollywood. Okay, okay. Friday night, nine o'clock, heart of Hollywood. Still, I love this band. I'm going to go see them. This is going to be really great. They have two opening acts. Okay, all right. Two opening acts. Um, and it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry, Beths. I love you. I think you are amazing. Uh, but I am far too old and have far little patience uh, to go out to a nine o'clock. Oh, also it was general admission. Uh, so there's no seating arrangements or anything. It's just general admission. And I'm like, Beth, uh, I love you, but I will wait till next time till you come around. Um, so, uh, but anyway, definitely check out the Beths and definitely check about, I mentioned it before reservation dogs. When I was home in August, uh, my mom mentioned uh, she was watching Reservation Dogs, and it was always on my list of stuff to watch, but I was just kind of catching up on other things and, and checking out other things like Severance um, on Apple TV and all that other kind of stuff, and uh, finally have started watching Reservation Dogs. Uh, it's just fantastic. Fantastic acting, fantastic stories. Um, I'm in the middle of the second season right now. I think I'm about five episodes into the second season. I think there's 10 episodes. Um, still good. I think the first season was really, I think the first season was really super strong. Uh, the second season, I'm kind of like going, is this going to be as strong? So we'll see. Um, and the great thing is all the episodes are out so you can binge it. And uh, it's really great. So that's the other TV show that I'm watching currently right now um is uh reservation dogs and uh, definitely the first episode is really great so if you check that out uh, i think you will enjoy it um but the main topic that i wanted to wrap up and and talk about here today on the show was i was thinking about this story and it's a story i don't believe that i have told here on the podcast before if i have forgive me. Um, old listeners, you're hearing this story again. New listeners, you don't have to go digging through the archives, but I searched and I don't think this was on here. Uh, when I was, it was either 86 or 88. Jury, jury is still out exactly when this was. We're still tracking down the exact time, uh, but I, we took a family trip to Walt Disney World and it was a great time. My grandparents, my dad's parents, uh, paid for the trip for my brother, myself, uh, my mom and my dad all to go down to Walt Disney World. And we had a great time. And one of the purchases that my brother made while we were down in Walt Disney World was a beach ball with Goofy on it. And it's just sort of a little uh, like Goofy. He's sort of like uh, he looks like he's on a beach. You know, he's got like that that one piece swimsuit and he's carrying a bunch of stuff or something like that. And uh, so anyway, we had a great time when we were home. And I don't know if this was right after or this was sometime after. Um, but I just remember it was an evening. Uh, my dad had just gotten home from work. And kind of when my dad got home from work, uh, my brother and I would like kind of be hanging out in the kitchen area, um, just sort of chilling and hanging out with my dad and uh, and my mom. And, you know, just like, hey, what, what happened the day? What happened in school? What's going on? What's happening? And our kitchen was sort of the best way to describe it was L shaped, like the letter L. So the long, straight part of the L that goes from the top or the bottom, you can imagine that that it that runs the length of the kitchen uh, past the sink, past the stove, past the refrigerator. And then where the short part of the L is, is where the table is. And it gets a little wider there. Um, so it's just kind of like a little narrow walkway that opens up into where the table sits. So my dad was sitting down at the table and my brother came down the hall and I was sitting at the at the other end of the L and my mom was busy making dinner so she was in that long skinny part of the L and my brother was just kind of running all over the place he was he was young and uh 
he had this beach ball and I either I grabbed it or my dad grabbed it and we started playing a little bit of keep away from my brother. So we're batting it back and forth, but we are batting it back and forth behind my mom who is preparing dinner. And every once in a while, the ball would hit my mom and it's a beach ball, but, and she would just be like, you need to stop bouncing that beach ball. You need to stop throwing that beach ball back and forth. You got to stop throwing that beach ball back and forth. But we thought it was hilarious. My dad was kind of egging it on and goofing around. And my dad hit it and it fell at my mother's feet. And my mother was chopping vegetables. And she picked up the beach ball and she stabbed that beach ball several times with the knife. And then threw it down on the ground and turned around to all three of us with the knife in her hand. And she said, I told you to stop playing with the beach ball in the kitchen. Uh, My brother ran screaming to his room. My dad and I uh, were just jaws agape staring at each other like, what the heck just happened? Uh, And so the beach ball story has become legend in our family. And I think it was last Christmas or the Christmas before uh, I found the beach ball, a brand new in bag version of the beach ball. Um, And I bought it for my brother for Christmas. And that's the beach ball story. And again, I apologize if I've said it before. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Grant Cast. I want to thank you so much for checking it out. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we'll try to be back very soon uh, with another episode. Going to c- try and stick to the every other week thing. We'll see how well that goes. But just thank you so much for subscribing to the show. Thank you for listening. If you got any feedback, you can, it's very easy to get in touch with me. You can just get in touch with me. But uh, thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon right here on the Grantcast. This episode of the Grantcast was edited by Stephen Staver, who probably did the artwork as well with his fancy AI machine. This episode was made possible by the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who've gone to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up a pledge for as little as a dollar a month. Big shout out to all our patrons and a special shout out to our patron producers, Eve Cunning, Kathy Crawford, Andrew Calcagno, Tony Urbano, Brandy, David Akers, Scott Armstrong, Vicky Sebring, and Dorothy Pachoco. Patrons at the behind the scenes level also get access to a video of the recording of this very episode. If you'd like to become a patron and receive the episodes of the Grantcast before they are released, visit patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up your monthly pledge today. And thank you for your support. This episode of the Grantcast is copyright 2023 Saturday Morning Media Grant Pachoco Executive Producer. All rights reserved. www.saturdaymorningmedia.com You've been listening to Saturday Morning Media. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.